now we get to try to solve some equations with multiplication and with fractions. So hopefully we'll see a cool technique here that will allow us to be able to solve these more easily in the future. So as our first example, we have negative 35 equals 7 fifths times u. Now, to unwrap our present here, we need to get rid of that 7 fifths, which is a problem. So for the first example, I'm going to show a couple techniques on a couple different problems, or a few, I guess. Let's take this and divide. Because 7 fifths multiplied by u, we wish to cancel out what we don't want, which is the multiplication. And the inverse operation, according to order of operations, would be division. So I'm dividing by 7 fifths. So on the right hand side, the 7 fifths and the 7 fifths will cancel nicely, just like we hoped. But on the left hand side, we now have negative 35. And that's being divided by 7 fifths. Recall that dividing by a fraction is equivalent to multiplication by the reciprocal. So instead of writing down divide by 7 fifths, I'm going to write it as multiply by 5 sevenths. Instead of having a complex fraction, we now have a multiplication problem. Now before I perform multiplication, I like to simplify from top to bottom as much as I can. Let's see, 5 and 7 don't reduce, but 35 and 7 do. There's a common number 7 that goes into 35, and a common number 7 that goes into 7. And so it looks like all that's left over is negative 5 times 5 on the top. That's negative 25. And on the bottom, it's just a 1, so I won't even bother writing it in. It looks like the answer here is negative 25 equals u. Or by the symmetry property of equality, I usually like to write this as u equals negative 25. Next, let's look at this equation. Pause for a second if you haven't tried it on your own. But we have 3 halves x equals negative 12. So following the same philosophy as last time, I'm going to try to cancel out 3 halves. But instead of dividing by a fraction, this time I'm going to perform an idea called multiplying by the reciprocal right off the bat. Okay, notice by doing so, I can look at the multiplications over on the left hand side and I can actually see the 2's and the 3's canceling out right away, leaving me just with x. And I don't have to worry about the, the notation with the dividing by a fraction. On the right hand side, negative 12 times 2 is negative 24 divided by 3 is negative 8, or negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Notice that multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't really matter the order in which we perform the operations here, remembering that 3, that 3 in the denominator means division. For the purpose of this video, though, to make it very explicit, I'm going to actually just write in my reducing, I call it. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So in the numerator, I have a negative 4 times a 2. That's your negative 8. And in the denominator, just the number 1. So I'm not even going to bother writing it in. Now as the third example, look at this one. This one doesn't even look like it has a fraction out in front because the numerator had the v and the negative 3 together. So it is actually a fraction. You could rewrite this as negative 3 fourths v equals 15 if you wish. But as opposed to that, on this particular problem, let's just do it in two steps instead of one. So first, with the 4 in the denominator, viewing that as division, I will multiply both sides by 4 for the purpose of canceling out the 4. So on the left, I'm left with negative 3v. And on the right, 15 times 4 is 60. OK, now we have multiplication. How do we unwrap that present by the order of operations? That's right, it's division. So I'm going to divide both sides by the same number, namely negative 3. Reducing on the left leaves me with v. 60 divided by negative 3 is negative 20. And that's the answer to this one.